Hi, this is Kyle Markham with International Futures Group, a division of EFG Group in Chicago. Uh, I want to chat with you about the grain trade today for uh, Wednesday, March the 9th. Uh, we did have a USDA report today. You wouldn't have noticed because the market really didn't do anything. Starting out with corn, unchanged on the domestic carryout, a little lower on the global carryout for corn. Uh, market very quiet as per usual. Uh, leading up to the report, it looked like a little bit of maybe bean corn spreading. You had corn uh, weak and the beans were rather firm, uh, but really there is no story. Uh, as I've been saying for two or three videos now, we're just going to start watching the weather. You're looking for some kind of a catalyst to put a weather premium into this corn market. Uh, at this moment, there's not a lot out there, but we are watching closely. Keep an eye on wheat as well, because wheat actually finished rather firm. Uh, and if wheat is able to continue to spook speculative shorts, uh, maybe that will be helpful to corn. Uh, the wheat trade today, you know, we, we, we pressed the market uh, earlier this morning. We're only down two or three cents. Uh, those lows made it all the way through the report. It's been a long time since you could say that it's just indicative of how low volatility is. We did eventually see uh, a bid come in. Domestic carryout was also unchanged on the wheat market, a little lower on the global standing. Markets didn't do a lot, but you have seen more Kansas City, Chicago spreading. Uh, Kansas City was giving it up to Chicago not only yesterday, but early today was able to get it back and actually KC Wheat uh, finished good six, seven cents off the low. So a bit of a rally there, uh, but you're looking at the charts, you need to get a bit more of a squeeze going uh, in order to look for any more significance from uh, the speculative short position, which we've talked about for months. You know, they haven't been shook by anything and we were down at 442 in the May wheat here just a few days ago. So uh, not a lot of news there. Looking at soybeans, the meal market was very firm early this week. We did trade all the way up to in the neighborhood of that 273 area. Uh, realized you know, we were down to 258 not long ago. So we have had about a $15 move in meal. Finally, today you saw the oil uh, getting some back, the meal oil spread and the crush spread moving quite a bit this week. For the actual numbers today, we were up 10 million on the uh, carryout for uh, soybeans, a non-event. And what's interesting about the price action, if you notice, they try to press the market. We trade down to 880 in the May beans and back up again. November beans are within spitting distance of that $9 level. You have to assume you're going to have a bundle of hedge orders right up there, assumingly, uh, you know, several ticks leading up to $9 and over $9. Price action wise, though, they try to sell them down, and here come the beans on the close to basically finish uh, right where they were before the report. So price action's been good. I would caution that we are on our sixth day up in the beans. Before we rotated off the low side of the range, we were down six days. So we'll have a look at exports tomorrow. Price action's been very good, but we're at the top side of the range, and I just don't know fundamentally if there's anything that's going to break us out to the upside. So we'll see how exports are in the morning. Real non-event for the uh, USDA today. Ideally, we get some weather uh, to get us a little bit of excitement here in the near term. And if we do, you guys will be updated accordingly. So thanks for listening. Again, this is Kyle with International Futures Group in Chicago.